Welcome to Yellowstone, Yellowstone National Park, the oldest national park in the United States. I think the oldest national park in the world. All right, we're gonna go explore. Hopefully see some buffalo, maybe some bear, some moose. Who knows what else we'll find. So let's go explore this beautiful national park. Spanning over 2.2 million acres across Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, Yellowstone is a land of incredible natural wonders and diverse wildlife. From its world-renowned geothermal features like Old Faithful and the vibrant Grand Prismatic Spring, to its breathtaking landscapes of towering mountains, lush forest, and vast valleys, Yellowstone offers a unique experience for every visitor. But this park isn't just about stunning scenery. It's also home to a rich variety of wildlife, including bison, elk, grizzly and black bears, and wolves, all thriving in their natural habitats. Whether you're here to hike at scenic trails, explore its geothermal marvels, or simply soak in the beauty of the great outdoors, Yellowstone promises an adventure like no other. Join us as we embark on a journey through the wonders of Yellowstone National Park. All right, welcome to Yellowstone. And a nice story about this teepee here is that uh, in the summer of 2022, um, several of the descendants of the native people who used to used to come here and uh, hunt the buffalo in this area in the summer of 2022 their descendants came here and erected the tents and it was the first or, or these teepees rather it was the first time teepees had been here since the the native people were forced out of this area in the 1800s and so they had a ceremony uh you know they were uh, a big ceremony that the, the natives had returned to uh to uh, put their teepees up which they'd been doing for you know thousands of years before they were forced out of here and um, you know they were looking for wildlife of course you know the, the native people they survived off buffalo or the bison and um, you know they said well there's uh, you know a park ranger said well there's no bison in the area nothing's gonna come by today uh, but then late in the day it just so happens that a lone male bison came up and can't, wandered down the road and came up by the teepee and just sat there and grazed in the presence of the teepee for uh, several hours that day. So I think it's a pretty nice story um, about the return of the bi uh, return of the native people in the teepees and then a bison coming by maybe to say hello and welcome back to the area. Who knows? But uh, anyway, nice story. Welcome to Yellowstone. Welcome to the West Thumb Geyser Basin, one of Yellowstone's most fascinating geothermal areas. Located on the shores of Yellowstone Lake, this basin offers a unique combination of vibrant hot springs, bubbling mud pots, and steaming geysers, all set against the backdrop of the largest high elevation lake in North America. As you walk along the boardwalk, you encounter an incredible variety of thermal features. One of the most striking features of West Thumb is its proximity to Yellowstone Lake. Here, you can witness geothermal activity right at the water's edge, with hot springs and geysers pouring directly into the lake. West Thumb Geyser Basin may be smaller than some of Yellowstone's other thermal areas, but its beauty and diversity make it a must-see destination. This is called Blackpool, although it's very blue. And we're in the West Thumb Basin, I believe it's called. So there's a lot of these geological features, a lot of geysers and hot pots boiling up water. And I don't know how hot the water is, but it's about 80 degrees out here. And when the steam comes up, it's so warm. And the steam hits you and you feel like you're in a, in a sauna or something. And the steam passes by. And even though it's 80 degrees and sunny, it feels really cool so yeah it's a pretty uh, unique experience here in yellowstone to come by these these uh, geysers and these water pots boiling off water wow <laughs> oh my goodness all right so this is our first buffalo jam in yellowstone we just got here earlier today and haven't even made it to our campground yet and 
traffic is all backed up. We've got a buffalo just strolling down the highway here. And uh, let me stick my this camera out the, out the window here and see if you can see him. Here he comes. He's slow. <laughs> he's slowly coming, but uh, he's meandering down here. Hey, buddy. How you doing? So he got it out of the road for us. That's a coyote. That's Mocha's cousin. Coyote. Where you at, bud? Okay, good morning. I'm up for another, uh, try to get some more sunrise, nice sunrise pictures this morning and just left the campground and there was uh, a big bull elk and uh, and a cow elk just hanging out. Um, I don't know, it looks like they were doing some sort of a lover's ritual or something. But uh, anyway, interesting way to start the day here at Yellowstone. And we have got Mr. Buffalo going for a swim. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Buffalo Jam. <clears throat> Whoa! Whoa, big boy! Look at this guy, he got trees in him! Oh, look at these guys! Wow, this is awesome! Whoa, big boy! Look at that. Wow, that's awesome. People are backed up for at least two miles because of the buffalo jam we just drove through. And so these poor people, they're all backed up. They can't go anywhere and they have no idea what, what's, uh, what the cause is for the jam. But uh, yeah, so about two miles of, of uh, traffic jam because of the buffalo walking down the street. There she goes, right on schedule. Old Faithful blowing her top like she has for thousands of years. So we are at the, and we're on the deck of the Old Faithful Lodge and looking out at it. Maybe you could see it, maybe there's someone in the way, but Old Faithful is just right out there behind me. And so this lodge is very, is, is very nice. It's an old historic uh, lodge. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. It's a very nice, huge fireplace inside. And you could come in here and they have signs posted as far as when the next predicted uh, eruption of uh, Old Faithful is, which is approximately every 90 minutes or so, give or take five or 10 minutes. And, um, but you can pretty much tell how close it is to uh, going off when you walk up, get close to the geyser. If there's a bunch of people there crowded around waiting, then you know that it's predicted to go off pretty soon. And then as soon as it goes off, after it goes off for a few, for a couple minutes, everybody will start leaving. So if no one's there, then it's probably not going to go off for a while. And if it's, if, but if there's a huge crowd, yeah, it's it's supposed to go off in the next few minutes. All right, so we're walking on the Fairy Falls Trail to the Grand Prismatic Geyser, or 
or hot springs. It's supposed to be very beautiful and colorful. They have some overlooks. We've got this beautiful river. I'm not sure if, the, I don't think that's the Yellowstone River. I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, we'll find out for you. And so, beautiful day here in Yellowstone. For the best view of Grand Prismatic Spring, a short hike up the nearby Ferry Springs Trail provides a spectacular vantage point, allowing you to fully appreciate the size and colorful vibrance of Grand Prismatic Spring. The contrast of the spring's colors against the surrounding landscape is nothing short of breathtaking. This trail gradually climbs 105 feet over 0.6 miles from the Fairy Tales trailhead, leading to a breathtaking view overlooking Grand Prismatic Spring and the Midway Geyser Basin. It's a popular spot, so be prepared for a wait to snap your photos. But trust me, the view is absolutely worth it. Welcome to one of Yellowstone's most iconic and awe-inspiring sites, Grand Prismatic Spring. As the largest hot spring in the United States and the third largest in the world, Grand Prismatic is a true wonder of nature. What immediately captivates visitors is the spring's vivid colors. The deep blue center is surrounded by bands of green, yellow, orange, and red, resembling a giant vibrant rainbow on the Earth's surface. These colors are caused by different types of heat-loving bacteria that thrive in the varying temperatures of the spring. Creating this mesmerizing spectrum, spanning over 370 feet in diameter and reaching depths of up to 160 feet, Grand Prismatic is as vast as it is beautiful. The intense blue at the center is due to the extreme heat of the water, which is near boiling making it impossible for most organisms to survive, resulting in crystal clear water. All right, welcome to Yellowstone. And right across the river, we got a grizzly bear just hanging out over there chilling, checking things out. Not really, not really sure what he's doing, but uh, it's better that he's on that side of the river and we're on this side of the river so we can just watch him. But it's been there for a while. All right, here we are sitting around the campfire with our salad. Had a busy day today. Nice beer. This is um, Old Faithful Ale. I wish it were Augustiner, aber leider nicht. Um, no, it's not. It's um, Old Faithful Ale, which is the best we can do here at Yellowstone. So. We had a busy day. We drove through a buffalo herd. We saw Old Faithful. We saw a bunch of different geysers. We went to the, um, what's that one called? The colorful one? Prasmatic. Went to a prasmatic. Overlook. Grand Prasmatic Overlook. Grand Prasmatic Overlook. Did some hiking. Um, and then on the way back, we saw a grizzly bear uh, on the side of the river. So that was pretty exciting stuff. So. Great day here at Yellowstone and finishing it off, sitting by the campfire. Isn't that lovely? All right. Have a good night.
Welcome to the Mammoth Hot Springs. And this area has a bunch of terraced little levels of, of hot springs that come out and they just come out and they, they go down the staircases they've created. Um, and as you look at them, there's a, a lot of different col colors, orange um, and all the way from between orange and, and white. And um, I guess there's, uh, from what I understand, there's microorganisms that actually live in the water that, that change the rocks different colors and I think the white ones no longer have water flowing over it's what it what I've observed anyway so it looks like maybe it's salt compounds or something I'm not sure but uh anyway so it's very cute very it's very beautiful actually very stunning now you're walking on um, these boardwalks the whole time you're out here and you think okay it's pretty easy we're just walking on boardwalks whatever but uh we've been out here and, and I've walked um, about a mile and a half completely on boardwalks and we've gone up some very steep hills and a lot of stairs so uh, you can get a pretty decent workout here if you're doing that now if you go up there's a very colorful one right here um, to my right and you can go up this boardwalk and it goes up some stairs um, and in my opinion if for something to look at it's it's not really worth it because it's really not that pretty up there I didn't think but if you just want some extra exercise sure go for it it's great but uh, if you just want to get that beautiful view it's really not that nice in my opinion there's a much nicer one lower down Welcome to the Roosevelt Arch and the uh, northern entryway into Yellowstone National Park and created by an act of Congress as you can see March 1st 1872 this is the oldest national park in the United States and I'm pretty sure it's also the oldest national park in the world um, you could check that out uh, I'm sure Google will tell you but uh, Yellowstone is huge it's beautiful there's so much to see and do but don't come here thinking you're gonna see it all in one or two days because it is, I, I forget the, the square mileage of this park, but uh, just for reference, it is bigger than the states of Rhode Island and New Hampshire, I think. Delaware. New Hampshire and Delaware, Rhode Island and Delaware combined. So it is really big, there's a lot of land and it really, it, it takes, I would suggest spending a week here because there's so much to see and do. And you can add in a couple days as far as with uh, Grand Teton National Park, which is just south of here, south of the park. Um, so if you drive in, you go through this gate and you want to get to the center of the park, which is, I don't know, roughly about uh, Canyonlands or Canyons uh, area, it's going to be about 50 miles. So. Um, it's a long drive, it is really big, so don't underestimate the size of this park, but it's beautiful, wildlife, uh, nature, there's so much to see, so come check it out, Yellowstone National Park. All right, so this is Fort Yellowstone. And this was an army installation that was formed shortly after the park was formed. The park was uh, was formed in 1872, and then a few years after that, there was a lot of, um, I guess, unlawfulness and a lot of uh, unsavory characters trying to do some uh, bad things with the take advantage of the park resources. So to uh, establish law and order, the um, U.S. government established an army post here. It sent the U.S. Army here. And as soon as you drive up, if you know anything about the U.S. military, even today, as soon as you drive up, you see these buildings like, wow, that looks just like a U.S. military base. And it really does. You can you can tell like right now I'm walking through the officers housing. They had uh, officer bachelor quarters and officer married quarters and they have uh, barracks for enlisted soldiers. They had a hospital. They had a commissary and, and an exchange just like our military bases do today so yeah um and it was here and and i don't know exactly how many years it was here but yeah so 
just to um, prevent the, I guess the, um, the robbing of the resources from the national park and to establish order, we uh, established an army base here. And I did not know that until just yesterday, I think when I got here. So there you have it, Fort Yellowstone and Yellowstone National Park. Here you go, right here in the lawn of Fort Yellowstone. We've got a herd of elk. like mostly cows and babies, cows and calves. I don't see any bull elk around here. He's hanging out grazing, chilling. Cars go by, people go by. Motorcycles go by. Doesn't seem to bother them. I think they're pretty used to it. Hello, buddy. So you can't come to Yellowstone and see all of these bison walking around and not uh, have a bison bratwurst. So I'm gonna try out this. I've had bison before, but I've never had it in a bratwurst. So we'll see how it is. It looks delicious. Not bad. Honestly, it tastes a lot like a hot dog, to be quite honest, but uh, it's good. I don't know if it's worth $15 or not, so if you really want to eat some bison, go for it. If you're not that hungry and you can wait for something else, go somewhere else. So, but buy some bratwurst. It's kind of like a big hot dog, maybe a Polish sausage, I guess. But um, it's really not like a bratwurst I've had in Germany, to be quite honest. But it's not too bad. Fifteen dollars. So, is it worth it or not? You have to be. You have to decide that for yourself. But anyway, there you go. Yellowstone National Park. Buy some bratwurst. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through Yellowstone National Park. From its awe-inspiring landscapes to its vibrant geothermal wonders, Yellowstone truly is a place like no other. Whether you've been inspired to visit for the first time or have rekindled your love for this amazing park, we hope this video has captured just a glimpse of what makes Yellowstone so special. If you enjoyed this adventure, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future explorations. Share your favorite Yellowstone memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear about your experiences. Until next time, keep exploring, stay curious, and remember, there's a world of wonder waiting out there for you.